Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and you probably thought you were gonna see me just once today, right? No, 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 no. Today we're doing a double upload and as you can see by the title, we're talking about Chelsea again. Now we're coming back to Chelsea Football Club once again because they are just being transfer menaces. Obviously after losing out a number of signings to Barcelona, which I still don't even understand how Barcelona are able to do the things that they're doing. Chelsea Football Club are looking to invest in players elsewhere. Now, the players that they're looking at are really good, and we're going to get into some of those players today. But Chelsea Football Club are such an interesting team. The amount of talent on deck at Chelsea is immense. It is really immense. The amount of talent that they possess, but the amount of talent that they also waste is just absurd. It is ridiculous. And getting into today's video, we're going to talk about the signings that they're looking to make, as well as how it kind of shakes up the team. So let's get right into it. First, let's talk about Chelsea potentially hijacking a deal for Brighton's Mark Cucurella for Manchester City. Now, before we even go into the deal, Mark Cucurella is a fantastic left back. I feel like he could improve any, any team in the Premier League bar Liverpool's left back positioning. I mean, Liverpool don't necessarily need another left back. All the other teams in the Premier League could do with a tremendous left back. I, I don't understand why this man keeps coming around, making all this noise with his lawnmower. The amount of times I've had to redo this segment because he's come around is ridiculous. Anyways, like I was saying, Marco Gorella could impact any team's left back standing. Now, Chelsea going for this deal is interesting because they have a whole host of left backs. This man came back. Like, this man is literally over here driving on the sidewalk he's not even mowing the grass gosh Ugh. anyway let's hope i'm not distracted again like i was saying marco gorilla is a great player him going to chelsea creates a lot of interesting storylines they have a whole host of left backs kennedy emerson marco solanzo is still there ben chilwell is still there um, i think baba Rahman has come back so chelsea are gonna have a lot of left backs if cucurella signs a deal now the fee i think is reported around 50 million and i think brighton are obviously going to accept that because that's what they wanted from manchester city um and cucurella I, I think would be fine going to either chelsea or manchester city if cucurella was to sign he would give ben Chilwell a run for his money without a doubt ben Chilwell is going to be fighting for that starting wing back position at chelsea if cucurella was to sign but let's be real i mean it'd be good for chelsea it'd be good to have that competition healthy healthy competition and it would kind of force Ben Chilwell to try his best to stay fit. Now, I know it's easier said than done, not getting an injury, but Ben Chilwell has had numerous injuries, and that has really plagued his Chelsea career so far. He's still a tremendous talent. I think he still deserves a starting left-back spot, but if he's not fit and Marco Gurella's on form, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Chelsea are also looking at signing Wesley Fofana from Leicester City, which, okay, Okay, Chelsea, you're trying to obviously make the best defense in the league because if they were to sign Fofana and partner him with Thiago Silva and Khalidu Koulibaly, that's a nightmare. That, that sounds like a nightmare for Premier League strikers. Imagine if Timo Werner wasn't on Chelsea and he was going up against that. He's already complaining about going up against Premier League defenders in general. Imagine he went up against that. That's a one-way ticket back to Germany for Timo Werner, without a doubt. Now, this deal is for reported £70 million, which is a lot of money. Wesley Fofana is about 21, 22 years old. £70 million is a lot. That, that is a lot. That's a whole lot of dedication and uh, trust that Wesley Fofana will live up to that price tag. And we've seen a lot of players not live up to huge price tags. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those are from Manchester United, but we have seen some from Chelsea. We've seen some. The most recent one being Romelu Lukaku. So, I don't know. 70 million? What do you guys think? I think that's a little too much. I don't think that gives Chelsea a lot of credibility for the signings that they've already made. Look at Koulibaly signing. They signed him for less than 40 million. Raheem Sterling was less than 50 million. But you're going to sign Wesley Fofana for upwards of 70 to 80 million? I don't know if that's the smartest deal. You know, the player himself and the talent and the passion that he will bring will obviously be great for Chelsea, but... Price tag is a lot. Price tag is a lot. Another one which isn't really new, but we've seen a lot is Thomas Tuchel really likes Frankie de Jong. Now, Frankie de Jong's transfer saga with Barcelona has to be one of the most annoying ever in transfer window history, however long that has been. 
because it just drags on and on and on from the player side, from Barcelona side. It's unreal how both sides don't even know what they want. Obviously, Frankie wants his money. You know, I'm sure he wouldn't mind leaving Barcelona if he got paid. Barcelona one day will say that they don't want to sell him. And then the next day, they're saying that they, they're forcing him to leave. He has to leave. I, I don't understand. And obviously, Chelsea at this moment are a better proposition than Manchester United for Frankie de Jong because they can offer him Champions League football. And him joining Chelsea's midfield would just be another blow for every team in the Premier League. Because adding Frankie de Jong to a midfield of N'Golo Kante and having players around him like Raheem Sterling, Mason Mount, and Kai Havertz, and having a defense behind you of Koulibaly, Thiago Silva, Chaloba, or potentially even Wesley Fofana, Reese James and Ben Chilwell, or potentially Marco Gorella, I mean, this is literally a dream team. A dream team. And Chelsea signing Frankie de Jong, Cucurella, and Fofana, that would make them Premier League title contenders. Obviously, bar the fact that they don't have a striker, because Kai Havertz at false nine isn't good enough to win them the league. I'm sorry, it's not. If Chelsea were also able to add a striker to the mix, another reinforcement that Chelsea could bring in is in the right back position. They're looking at Denzel Dumfries from Inter Milan and Kyle Walker Peters from Southampton. Very, very good backup options for Chelsea. I feel as if Dumfries is, you know, more of a higher profile, obviously, than Kyle Walker Peters. And I think Dumfries should be starting in a Premier League team. Um, but obviously, Reese James is. You're not taking Reece James out of that starting eleven. That's that's not happening. You know he's one of the untouchables in that Chelsea team. But adding some quality and depth, keeping him on his toes, nothing wrong with that. Um, and I think the most sensible one would probably be Kyle Walker Peters. But I know for his career, he'd probably want to start games and and increase his um, his stance and you know trying to get into the English national team. So really strong potential deals for Chelsea to be made here. I mean, this could really take them from maybe making top four, <laughs> you know, because a lot of people don't have the most confidence in Chelsea heading into the new season, which, I mean, with the attacking talent that they have and the defensive stability that they still have, you know, they should be making top four pretty comfortably. But the signings that they could potentially make that we talked about in this video could take them from top four to really challenging with Manchester City and Liverpool. It all really depends on whether or not they can buy a striker that can get them 15 goals in a Premier League season. And that's going to do it for the video. Let me know what you think. Do you think Chelsea have a chance at signing all of the players mentioned today? Or do you think they should be looking at other positions and other players, especially that striker position? Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos. I'll link them right here. Thanks for watching. Peace.